Happy Thursday to you everyone. Hey, I want to show you a little tip today for transitioning your dog from the place cot or the place mat to just the floor, to anywhere that you want to make your dog stay. And the reason why I want to show you these tips is because a lot of dogs have a hard time with that transition. Some is seamless, but for the vast majority, they need a little additional help because when you perform command place, they have this cot. They can feel it. It's raised up above the ground. It's visual. It takes advantage of that number one sense that they use to learn and process information in their world. So when you take them off of it, it's kind of like, this is what I do stay on. I, I don't know how to do stay without the place cot. So let me show you a couple of tips that you can do to help transition more smoothly from place into a regular stay that you can use anywhere. Okay, ready? So let's do it. Free. So I'm going to get Skipper here. Now, Skipper's a six-month-old, uh, I think actually nine-month-old, uh, female lab, cute as can be. <laughs> in fact, I hope you can see her. Maybe she's blending in with the floor. So I did put a red leash on her, so it looks like I'm just guiding around a little shadow. Okay, what I've done is I've taken advantage of that sight, that, that sense of vision to help my dog transition to a stay off of the cot. And what I've used here is a little board, and you guys can make one yourself, or you can use a curb. Again, just be creative. This is just high enough to where Skipper can actually make a mistake. She can actually step over it, and that's, actually, that's really good because I adopt the attitude, wrong is good. When I'm first training you, wrong is good because it allows me to give you feedback, and it's that feedback that helps you learn what it is I'm trying to teach you. So in this little situation here, I set up this little board and I use two cones. And again, you don't have to go out and purchase two cones and a board and use some angle irons to make it stand upright. You can use two chairs. You can use a closet door in your foyer. You can use a coat rack, something visual, but do me a favor. Here's what I do when I do this setup here. I'll do 10 repetition on the board and the two cones. Then I will remove one cone and do 10 repetitions, and then remove the other comb, 10 repetitions, and then finally remove the board altogether for another 10. So about 40 to 50 repetitions, you have a dog that can stay without having a visual reference or a haptic signal like the big place cot back there. Okay, so let me demonstrate it with Skipper real quick. All right, Skipper dog, let's go, sweetheart. Free, hop up there, and we're not gonna do place, we're gonna come over here and do stay. Now, when you do stay, always give the dog a big open palm hand signal. Again, I always take advantage of vision. Stay. Once you say stay, you step over the board. You never allow the dog to step over the board. Okay, and then when you return back to the dog, heel, heel away from the board itself, away from the board. Whatever you've set up, heel away from and never allow the dog to go past this threshold. So again, heel, stay, step over the board. She has to remain there while you remain on the other side of the board. Feel free to give a treat. Feel free to even tempt the dog a little bit. Here you go, Skipper. Right over that board. Because again, we're adopting the attitude, wrong is good, wrong is good. So I really, at this moment, would have hoped that she would have tried to step over that board because I could have shown her that you're not supposed to do that, kind of like stepping off the cot. Let's see if she does. No, she's not doing it. All right, good girl. It's always a reward if they do well. So now I'm going to come back. Good girl, I'm going to remove one of these cones. Fast forward, so pretend like we've done 10 with the two cones and the board. Heel. And we heel out of it. We come back around, do the same thing again, stay. And also take notice that I'm not making Skipper sit. I'm not going for a down. I'm not going for a sit. I'm just going for a stay. Keep it simple, stupid rule. Simple. We can work on positioning later. Right now, stay means stop right there. Don't move out of that spot. All right, return back. I'm going to remove the other cone, so we'll pretend like we've done 10 more. They're out of the way. Heal. We heal out of it. We turn around, come back. 
Stay. Good girl. Very good. And she's looking down at that board. If you were standing here with me, actually handling Skipper, you can feel her. You can see her. She looks down. She spots that board and literally, boom, spots that landing. Beautiful. All right. And then eventually, we remove everything. Heal. We heal out of it. We come back to a spot. Stay. And immediately move away from the dog. And of course, you graduate to dropping your leash, moving about, doing other things like sitting down, opening doors, what have you. Good job. Good job, sweetheart. Good. Free. Free. Now, if you don't think that dogs don't pay attention to this, know this. Kira and I have recently found a new place that we enjoy walking. So it's a different setting, a little bit different exercise requirements, some hills and a few other things that we just enjoy when we go for a walk and take Catherine for a walk. Well, use your imagination. This is not a pie. This is actually a very quick drawing from me of a baseball complex, a baseball complex in which they have six diamonds. So these are six baseball fields right here. And then this blue line is a big, or red lines I'm drawing, a big chain link fence about eight feet high. Well, one day while we were walking, this was about a week and a half ago, right here in center field as we're walking, the path comes this way and continues around and then takes off to another location. There was a baseball lying right there in center field. And Captain took notice of that ball. And if you guys have seen Captain in previous videos, he loves a ball. And so he just pointed straight up on that ball, and then he started zigzagging back and forth and back and forth, trying to get to the ball, but he couldn't. So again, I let him do that for a little bit, and I said, heal, and we continued on our walk. Well, guess what, guys? Every morning, we take that same walk. And every morning since he saw that baseball, and the baseball is long since gone, he goes right to that field, not that field, not that field, this one, this one, or this one, and not over in this corner, and not over in that corner, but exactly where the ball was. He goes there. And why? Because of vision. Dogs, like their wolf ancestors, travel by line of sight. Their eyes are so important. He has located possibly a tree across the way here is what I'm guessing. Right here is a little bitty maintenance type shack that is there. Maybe that's what he's using. I'm not sure because I tried myself to pick out which baseball diamond it was that held the ball originally and I actually guessed wrong. And I pride myself on using my vision from having been raised in Alaska, being in the military, traveling in strange areas, line of sight traveling, and I missed it. But he was spot on every single time. Take advantage of that stuff, guys, because now when I do stay, for example, at my household, I look at all the places in the home in which I would require my dog to stay. So maybe in the foyer, I go to answer the door, stay. I go to the door, dog doesn't go to the door with me. And then once I open the door, I can put the dog somewhere else, so I can tell the dog to go place. But I lined up closet doors in the foyer, train the dog right by those closet doors, tapping on those dog doors using social marking. That's where you stay. Other people use an ottoman. They use a chair. They use a coat rack. Like I said, an umbrella holder. Find different places in your home and practice stay there by these visual markers. Use it because here's what will happen. I guarantee it. Now when I go to the door to answer the door, guess what Captain does? He stops right by that closet right there. I don't even have to tell him stay. That is where he stops. He locates that marker, that physical marker, just like he did that baseball in that diamond. So guys, take about 40, 50 repetition for the average dog. And I'm telling you what, from that point on, if you ever need your dog to stay, if you have the ability, for example, if you're at a park and there's a bench, maybe take your dog near the bench and make it stay there. Maybe take it near a certain tree. Tap on that tree. Tap. Stay. And this is for young dogs. As they get older, they're, they're more seasoned. You can just say stay 
and they'll just, no matter where they are, they could be in the middle of the tundra, and they're not going to move. But again, this is a very young dog, and with young dogs, I love to make that transition from that obvious place caught that we sensitize them to, to now sensitize them to another physical object in their environment, use that for stay, and then fade it away. And when you do that, you'll have a great little dog, my skipper dog here. Huh, sweetheart, you did good, you did good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, stay. Oh, there we go. We're getting somewhere. We're moving. Good job. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Take advantage of their eyes. Use their eyes to help them learn. Enjoy the rest of your day.